Okay, so if the previous video was an overview of sampling on Regen, this video is going to be a bit more depth in some of the areas, such as multi-sampling and, and the patch list. So it's going to appeal to those people that want to dive a little bit deeper into the sampling capabilities of Regen. So without further ado, I've got some samples on uh, an SD card that are my samples. So we're going to load that up and we'll see what we can do with them. So I'll press user to go into my SD card. See there's two libraries on this one. I've got some drum samples, some piano samples. The ellipsis just means that there's um, subfolders inside that library and I can fold or unfold them with the enter button. So if I unfold them, you'll see there's hi-hats, kicks, percussion, snare. So I'm going to um, percussion and then if I press sample now, it's just going to show me everything in that subfolder. So I've got some 808 claps, claps, etc. I can audition these, find ones I like. So I like that one. Let's let's map that. So um, I'm going to start by cutting everything. So we're starting from scratch. We'll change the first partial on the first track. We'll change the mode, uh, the wave mode to samples. I can then go right or I can press edit and then I can choose a file and I can choose many files. We're going to choose the one we just like the sound of. Yep, that's the correct one. The green bar shows that it's been armed or regen is armed listening for a key. So um, we'll just put it on C3 and press enter. That um, edit button was flashing just to tell you that you're adding something to the patch list. So we've added that with the enter key. It's on C3, it's not on the other one. So let's look at what the pitch is now. If I go into the define, okay, well I can I can tell that the, the base key is C3. And so that's fine. It's going to play the sample natively. Now with other um, types of percussion, maybe tom drums, you'd want to tune them. So you could actually change the, the, the bass key. Uh, and that might be a bit extreme. I'm going to set it back by arming it to C3. So you can just go up so many cents and uh, have a, a fine tuning experience with your sample. So it's not quite a drum kit yet. So let's, on the, still on the same partial, let's go back to edit. If I go down, it's going to create another line for me, and I can choose another sample that's on another um, uh, another key. So um, start to listen to these again. Find one I like. Okay, well that's pretty pretty neat. That's always a good one. Yeah, let's let's go for that one, and then I'm going to press D and select it. So now I've got two samples. You can see them here. If I put them on the same keys, you get the conflicting samples thing. I'll show you that. If I put this, if I press C3 again for the cowbell and um, called it up there, it would just say they're conflicting. They're both on the same one. So you're going to just hear one of them. You're not going to hear them both. So you obviously don't want to do that. So I'll just change that cowbell back uh, to D. Excuse me, I'll press two keys at once. Press D, press Enter. Cowbell is on D, clap is on A. Uh, yeah, some people will use the black keys for um, sound, uh, for a drum kit, some people won't, some people will be want to be here, some people the kicks go first, the percussion, but as you can see, it's fairly quick workflow to um, set things up. Uh, they don't choke each other. So actually, the cowbell's kind of drowning out the other one. So what we can do is just bring the volume down on, on the cowbell, the file volume is on the cowbell is so let's get that now you can clearly hear that they're not uh, drowning each other out of course different volumes would be uh, different instruments in the drum kit would be different volumes anyway so you might have some tuning uh, if your samples are normalized you certainly have some tuning work to do there um, double uh, excuse me if i go back to that and i double tap that it goes back to the default we'll take that one back now, without having to go back to edit and back to uh, navigating up or down, if I wanted to change that volume, I can just use the load sound keys and I've gone up my patch list. Now, you've got to be careful doing that because if I went to the library and then, or, or I was basically out of that sample patch list area and pressed one of those, 
as a sort of memory muscle, then I would just load another sound. So I'd lose my work. So, um, but very, very useful and quick to be able to navigate. Because when you're on these pages, of course, this is changing the parameter that you've got selected. So yeah, they don't choke each other on the patch list. And I can just continue to add. So I'll add, just for completeness, we'll add, um, now I've gone to the presets, so I want to go back to my users, my user, I keep pressing a help button or something. And let's pick, yeah, let's pick a kick drum then. Uh, sample, find a kick I like. Nice bassy 808 kick there. Yeah, let's pick that one. Okay, so we'll put that one on E and uh, very beginnings of a drum kit. Now the, the kick, um, I might want to um, change the mode on that. So B back blue is how I remember it. I'm going back now and then I've got my sub menus. I'll go to loop and trim. I've got the modes here, the loop mode. So the default is no loop, where was I, on my kick drum. I could change that to a one shot. So it doesn't matter now how quickly I tap it, I can get the whole sample going. And that's maybe what you want for a kick drum. Um, let's have a look what else there was. So there was the, the cowbell. Now the cowbell, you might want to do something snazzy like that. Uh, and you might want to want to choke it, or you know, you might want you might want it to mute, and then kind of get overwritten by the next one. So you wouldn't set that one to one shot. Of course, there's other modes here. If I hold that key down now, it's always looping. Uh, the loop with the tail is when you have a, a longer sample and you set loop points. Do you want to hear the you will always want to hear the tail in the release. That's the difference there. All of these are described in the, in the manual and then the one shot loop is gonna finish the one shot at the end of the, of the release. So that, that's all described in the manuals, but pertaining to percussion, uh, certainly uh, the one shot or the no loop are the ones you're going to use most of the time. I will go back now to my library and I'll come up to the top. Uh, level and show you the loop, the kind of some of the looping features here. So uh, now, if I press sample, that's what's in the parent directory effectively is this one. So I'm going to just pull this up now, and that's going to delete, well, that's going to load a new timbre, a fresh timbre. So it's going to overwrite what was on there, and that'll be uh, on every key. We'll find out what key it's in now. So if I go back here, it's in, it's in A4. Go to A4. So that's where it is. So this one, I could certainly loop it, uh, loop the tail, or always loop. Always loop is fine for this, I think. So now when I've got my key pressed down, it's going to keep looping it and looping it and looping it. Now, the other thing I said, what what key this was mapped in. So by default, if it doesn't tune it, it's going to be in A4 and it will be different across the keyboard. Maybe I didn't want pitch tracking. So if I didn't want pitch tracking, it's a bit of a silly place and we know that, but there was nowhere else to put it. It's, it's on the same panel, it's pitch track on off. So now A is the same key everywhere on the keyboard. So it's just in the native subway. So let's just quickly show you that. And then let's go back to look, looking at the loop modes. So, um, well, that that's looping now when I when I press it. Um, um, now I can change the loop starts because there's different things in here. And actually, I could just take one hit out of there and use it as a sample for for this if I wanted to. So um, yeah, you can kind of see where the transitions are there. So what I can do is I can change my loop start. I can also change. Um, start of the sample, you'll see this this going up and on really, really long samples, you might want to hold this and do it because it's a lot faster to dial stuff, stuff in. 
So I'll actually show you if I go if you go right start time and end time. Then we, we can quickly hear what we're what we're listening to. So that's that transition. And I'm just going to press and hold this to go a bit quicker, scrub a bit quicker. That's that transition. Okay, so it's it's only looping where I started, but say I only want to loop this part, you can see what I'm doing now, and that's in yellow, is um, you'll start the sample there when you hold the key. But let me loop this part. Now, it's a bit glitchy, so you'd have to experiment a, li a little bit on trying to get to zero crossing points. <clears throat> but there's a very short fade, I think like a three millisecond fade, so it's never going to be terribly glitchy. So, okay, that's the, that's the sample I want, let's say. So that kind of shows you uh, the features there and what you can do. Um, I explained earlier that the samples don't choke each other. Um, I, I'm going to switch now to show you the beat loops and how they work because they use uh, these modes, well, they use the one shot mode and then they do choke each other. So if I call up uh, an entire session, I'm going to go to the preset one, find Heath Fleming Smith's library. And if I press timbre, it's going to show his timbres. If I then press session, it's going to show his sessions. So if I call up beat loops Chicago, press enter again calls it up, you'll see there are seven different beat loops. And if you look at the uh, display here, you'll see shakers, drone, drum, hi-hat, bass, Chicago, accompaniment, uh, accent, sorry. So we'll go to, um, well, we'll investigate what these do. Let's let's look at that. Let's investigate what these guys do. So, so if I go to the full description of the session, I can see uh, I have the drums on C three. So that was this one, isn't it? Now that's a one shot. So that's going to continue until the end of that um, for uh, eight bar loop, unless I press this key or another key within that range. So um, if I look at the shaker, that might be a Better way to explain it. So the shaker is on E3 and G3. So I've got different, slightly different flavor of shakers, and then I'll continue to eight bar. So I can do things like this, or mute the shaker. So let's see what's going on. If I look at this, the range for this timbre, which has got the shakers on it, is E3 to G sharp 3. And then if I look at the patch list, I can see where my shakers are maps, and there's nothing on the black keys. So there's, you'll see it on the keyboard when I hit them. There's this one, this one, and then G sharp 3, uh, F sharp 3, sorry, there's nothing on it. So even though that's one shot, that is getting muted out because we go to our, our friend the mode and it's on mono retrig. So uh, a, I guess a quick recap of what these, these modes do. Um, mono retrig basically means that there's only one note can play at any one time on that timbre. So if there was nothing mapped to that key, it's still going to mute the previous note that was playing. Uh, another example of mono retrig would be uh, the famous beat it gong. What's happening is uh, when you hear the doom, 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 it's um, muting the previous note playing, but it's actually re triggering. Um, if it was just mono, it would be um, not playing the attack again, and the, the sound would just move in the, in the, in the spot it was in the, in the ADSR envelope. It would just go to the next note. So that's a bit like a, an older analog, um, one of the first, you know, kind of analog synthesizers that didn't really have an envelope trigger. And so that would be pure mono. And then you've got poly retrig. The way I remember that is like the phone uh, category, you know, the xylophone and uh, odophone and all the different um, phones, or, or basically bells, imagine bells, 
each one a different key. Uh, if you press a different bell, it's going to start the attack. But if you repeatedly press this, uh, strike the same bell, it's going to kind of do this um, thing where it where it re-triggers that. So you can have um, several notes going at once, but if you hit a bell, it's going to excite the bell in the same way. So it, it forces it to go back to the start of that on poly re -trigger. And then polyphonic is as, as many notes as your fingers can play. You're going to hear every single note and you can add more notes on top of the other notes. So that's kind of a bit of a segue onto a quick description of that again in the manual covers all of those modes, um, but that's what's being used in the sessions um, when we're looking at the different, um, we look at different instruments and why they do choke each other. I think that's, so I think that's covered a lot of ground regards drums and percussion. Uh, we can start to um, look at other instruments now and how you might use uh, the patch list in a slightly different way. So if I go back to my SD card, and remember we have the drum set. I'm just gonna fold that for now and we'll look at what we've got in the piano samples directory. So samples. So we've got every C note of uh, an 88 key piano and it's struck medium soft hard. And we can listen to that. So that's C2. Okay, so that's the samples we have. So um, I'll start from scratch again because we had that session in there. Now if I call up one of these um, to a patch list. Again, I want to change this to samples and then I want to choose that file. Um, if I call, call that up across the range, I don't actually select a range, um, I have C4, I would want to check with my own samples, uh, with my own samples, whether that was uh, uh, correctly identified as a C4 key and it hasn't been. That's uh, that's picked it up as A4. So um, that's because I didn't have um, when I selected the sample auto tune. So I can turn on auto tune, and rather than having to dial that in myself, Regen is going to analyze the fundamental. Fundamental when it calls that up to the entire range of the keyboard, it's hopefully going to get C4. And actually, the piano tuning guy was off that day by two two cents. So that's what Regen thinks it thinks it is. So. Um, let's see, there we go. So now I can play and yeah, it sounds tuned. What's happening is I'm pitching that down or up um, accordingly and we'll get more authenticity by adding more of those samples across the keyboard range in a second, but um, we'll kind of explain explain what's what's happening. I should say actually that the auto tune doesn't always work. So if you had something that was a really low note, maybe we'll see that in a second, or a really high note, it can struggle. So you'd you'd have to do it. But the auto tune is it is useful for your samples as a as a starting point, and often it works, particularly in the middle range of the keyboard. So um, there's there's something slightly differently happening, or this this interpolation of the samples, um, whether you pitch a sample up. I'm gonna I'm gonna change my keyboard so that one is there. So if I pitch a sample up an octave, I'm playing the sample faster. I'm still interpolating the sample the samples, but if I play it slower, it could be such that I'm missing samples at that rate. So I'm having or doubling essentially the rate at which that sample plays, but depending on how it's sampled. There's going to be more interpolation happening um, when I pitch something down. So you get a different kind of a, a flavor. And so if you pitch that down, classic thing on uh, some of the old samplers with, as you get that kind of grunginess um, that, that people like by the sample being decimated. So rather than in, being interpolated, um, the, sa the sample steps, and then you get some of that uh, distortion effectively. Now we've got here, here, sorry, here. You've got an alias filter off by default for sampling. Now if I turn that on, that is going to interpolate, and you'll hear that that grunge has gone now. 
So now I can kind of play the whole keyboard. It kind of sounds a bit like a piano. <laughs> um, one thing I found with uh, going through some of the piano stuff on here is uh, it's, it's nice to have a tiny little bit of reverb. So we'll do that now so that when the keys come off, can you imagine a, a, a piano sound box will still reverberate? Uh, the same is true, or we can get to kind of a similar effect with just a smidgen of reverb, say about, uh, that's even too much actually. Let's go with 7%. And um, I can play with these if I really want to dial in. But for now, I'm just going to add a tiny bit of reverb. I'm going to also check my volume envelope here and make sure I've got the right amount of release. That's not too bad. Anywhere between 60 and 120, so that 100 is a default. It isn't too bad at all. So let's go ahead and add more. Um, let's go ahead and add more um, samples to make it a little bit more of an authentic piano. So I'm going to go down again and then I'm going to choose a file. I've still got auto tune off. So now I'm going to pick this one. Now, I don't want the whole range because I'm going to get conflicting samples. So with um, C5, let's go. Oh, hold on, I've changed. OK, so let's go from C5 to B5. I press those two keys together, then press that. That's where it's going to pick that up. And then I want to change the range for C4. So if I go back to C4 and I want to change, uh, define my range, it's a bit more awkward now. Um, because I have to do each one individually, but I can press it twice to arm it, you'll see the green light, and then I'll go to B4. So now when I come out of here, you'll see the two ranges are there. So that's stretching, <laughs> stretching up or pitching up sam sample four and sample five. Again, if I wanted that alias filter off and I wanted a different type of effect, I might prefer pitching down, or I might pick um, a, a, a range between between this. Um, if I was using C, I might um, pick a range from say A uh, up to E or something like that. So you get some pitched up and some pitched down. But it's a it's a hard difference. So sometimes you'll hear this, sometimes you won't. So you can. Now, the more samples you had, the better those transitions are, because they they wouldn't be stretched so much, and it wouldn't sound like the same timbre, because uh, different keys on the piano works so differently. But what you could do is you could use the uh, you you could actually put these samples on different partials. You could you could blend the range and have them cross faded and then the transition isn't noticeable at all. But if you do do that, of course, you can't use a different one. Well, you can up to 12, you've only got 12 partials. So if you have uh, three velocity levels, which we do, you could only have four different notes, which again, we do, so we could do it that way. But as you get more and more notes, you're better off to use a patch list to define the keyboard range rather than the crossfader. Thanks for watching.